Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good afternoon. All right, great. Thank you so much. So welcome everyone to Diversity in Libraries. Uh, I'm Dr. Nicole Cook. I'm the instructor for this class. Uh, and thank you for everyone that is visiting with us today for the Baker Diversity Lecture Series. And so today I am very pleased uh, to welcome Selena Sharman to our class today. Uh, Selena and I met briefly at a conference uh, last fall and we exchanged cards and when I saw uh, that she works for the New Americans program, I was really excited and really uh, wanted uh, to be able to have her present to the class. It's one of those things, those great programs that you read about. Um, and, you know, when you have the opportunity to hear about it live and in person, uh, you definitely want to be able to do that. So Selena is at the Queens Public Library uh, and focuses on the customer. Uh, and she's going to talk about Queens immigration, or excuse me, immigrant population, uh, which is the most ethnically diverse in the country, and talk about the Queens Public Library's outreach to specific ethnic communities. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Selena. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Dr. Cook. Good afternoon, everyone. I uh, hope everyone is doing well. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Dr. Cook and I met uh, last fall in one of the conference, and I'm I'm uh, I'm blessed and then grateful that I I have that opportunity to share my um, experiences with you guys. Uh, so, uh, as you know, my name is Selena Sharmin. I'm the coping skills librarian at Queens Public Library since 2011. Part of my job is to organize educational workshops other languages than English. Any languages are spoken in Queens and you name it. Today, my presentation will focus on brief description about Queens Public Library services and how to reach out to immigrant population and serve the culturally diverse community in Queens. Okay, so as, as you see the screen um, for uh, Queen's demographic from two, 2000 and uh, 2010, uh, um, Queen's public library is for everyone, uh, no matter where we come from, who you love or what you believe. Recently, Queen's public library changed their logo and color but as you see, our demographic had changed over the last decade. And this year, since 2020, we are expecting uh, more changes uh, in the community. As I said, Queen's Library is for everyone, and Queen's Library is a safe uh, space for uh, all. Uh, before um, I started at Queen's Library, it's been 20 years ago, 2000. I started as a um, you know part timer, and then Queen's Library supported me to go back to the library school, and I became a librarian, and I started uh, you know. Uh, like working as a children's librarian at Queen's Public Library. And as I said, the demographic has changed a lot and I am the witness for that. So uh, let's see uh, the Queen's, Queen's County profile. Uh, in 2010 census, as you see, uh, the, the, the population was 27.6% non-Hispanic white, 27.5% Hispanic, and 17.7% uh, non-Hispanic black and African-American. And then, um, and the Queens has 47% total population who uh, speak other languages than English. As you see, the quiz demographic uh, had changed a lot. And um, we are uh, excited for Census 2020. And I think you all know that Queens has 160 languages, you know, uh, uh, people spoken uh, uh, languages, and in, the, in addition to English, and representing 190 countries. Yes, of course, Census 2020, uh, as I said, we are excited to see uh, the demographic changes uh, in Queens. 
and also uh, most of our workshops we uh, we do based on demographic uh, in different parts of Queens Public Library. So for Census 2020, we have selected 40 hard to reach out uh, library locations in Queens. And as we all know, Census 2020 will be online and uh, Queens Public Library is partnered with Census 2020. So um, we will be organizing more than um, more than six languages workshops. As we know, last summer, the mayor office this awarded 1.4 million collectively to the Queens, Brooklyn, and New York public library system to serve as the city's go-to places for people to take the census. Outreach, outreach uh, resources, relationship with community partners, and standing as trusted institution uniquely po uh, position us to take on this role. Queens Public Library is training other staff, and we already uh, created the um, um, marketing materials. The kick-up workshops will be uh, at the Queens Public Library uh, April 1st. As I mentioned earlier, uh, Queens has a residence uh, 47 a uh, person who speak other languages than English, and these statistics is based on uh, based on um, a 2018 American Community Survey, U.S. Census Bureau. So Queens Public Library has 65 community libraries. And um, since it has been 20 years, I'm with the Queens Public Library. I, I had a chance to work in 42 different physical locations. And Queens Public Library, um, we have seven adult learning centers, which we served uh, fiscal year nine, 2019, more than 4,000 students. And each uh, community uh, libraries are two miles apart. Uh, so those are like walking distance. So businesses we did uh, for fiscal year 2019, uh, there were 13.5 million items circulated and then um, 11.2 million visited at Queens Library and then uh, 172,000 new library cards were issued. And we had 972,000 active borrowers and we had 52,000 free programs attended by 880,000 customers. As you see, 3 million reference questions were answered and 7.8 million visitors to visited to our website. This is our organizational chart. And as you see, our organization is a horizontal structure at Q, uh, Queens Public Library, I, I report to senior management. Uh, as I said, part of my job responsibility is to organize uh, educational workshops, other languages uh, than English throughout 65 community libraries. And then languages I coordinate, you name it, starting Arabic, Bengali, Haitian, Urdu, uh, Spanish, uh, Russian, um, Korean, uh, etc. And I also uh, I always need need to attend trainings and meetings, depending on the current issues, such as Census 2020, I'll be actively involved for all the meetings and training related to Census 2020. New Americans program is one of the department uh, that Queens Public Library has uh, services for immig immig immigrant population. Uh, New Americans program was established in 1977 seven. Uh, the main idea was um, to uh, serve the immigrant population and educate them about the American culture and how they can easily settle down when they migrated to Queens. Uh, keep in mind long-term and short-term goals of all the services we are providing for our patrons. It is important that the immigrant can cope quickly and adapt new culture in their country. We try to make them feel 
Queen's Public Library is home away from home for them because Queen's Public Library is a safe haven and home away from home for them. And as you see, New Americans program included coping skills workshops, cultural arts programs, ESOL programs, etc. Um, based on uh, the current issue and demographic needs, as we know, demographic is changing every minute, I would say, at Queens, and it's a lot. So we mostly make a partnership with uh, most of the community-based organizations. So let me talk about some, uh, uh, some uh, outreaching and then the programming. Um, we have a very strong strategic planning for Queen's Public Library, which is like we believe we have powerful people and powerful programs. The demographic of Queen's, um, since the demography of Queen's is changing every minute and nature of the informational need is changing quickly. New Americans program always focuses on demographic changes and current issues uh, to help and serve the um, diversely uh, uh, population. So there, there are some principles of services from us, uh, which is uh, which is like uh, we keep in mind always uh, we practices for intellectual freedom for uh, for our services uh, is always open, free access, and no cost to the library users and its resources. We always have the best customer service for our clients because our staff speak most of the languages spoken in Queens. Recently, Queens Public Library added the new languages device for the language in interpretation. So services, as I said, we, we of course we have the uh, you know programs and services for uh, children, for young adults, for teens, uh, for adult um, senior citizens. Uh, but from New Americans program, since uh, I work at New Americans program, I'll be mostly talking about uh, New American New Americans program, what we do and how do we do that. So we do have international um, relation, uh, relations services, which is like other country, um, other countries, librarians, they come and uh, you know visit our our system and and learn our services and then bring that experience with them. Uh, for example, in Spain, um, uh, Netherlands, Australia, we always have in turn. So we do have um, once again New Americans program program's main purpose is to provide accurate and current informational services to our client. We not only organize the different languages workshop, but also we always have new initiative with the immigrants serving agencies, such as a domestic violence um, educational workshop in Bengali, Hindi, Urdu, and with the other organizations. And as you see, the international relationship, uh, we already have National Library of China, Shanghai, and we have a sister library partnership, Biblioteca, Public uh, the Information, um, and um, uh, we are uh, we we always participate in IFLA and other international organizations. Organizations. Um, I would like to highlight some of my coping skills workshop and I will explain briefly um, how we do it. Uh, most importantly, uh, coping skills workshops are educational workshops and um, basically uh, all of them are other languages workshop. But this one, I want to highlight this specific one. Uh, this is a free suggestion class. Uh, as you see in the screen left side, the blue, flyer is, um, you know, in, in different library locations, which is Central Library. 
Usaid and this one Hill. These are three specifically uh, different demographic, uh, you know, communities who are living there. And um, we are partnered with USCIS and, um, and we have city budget. So we help uh, our client how to practice their, um, you know, 100 questions and then exams uh, preparation for free citizenship. So this is a, uh, you know, paid program. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the right hand side, as you see, free citizenship classes. And if you look at the bottom, it says the ANSOF Center, there is a logo. So ANSOF Center is one of our community-based organization nonprofit. So they are doing these uh, free citizenship classes at the library uh, for free of cost. Uh, of course, all of the you know classes are free of cost. Uh, but when I mention our budget, we need to pay the uh, presenter uh, to do their classes. But when we partnership with the organization, community-based organization, such as ANSOF Center, they have the grant for USCIS, and they are um, doing these classes in collaboration with New Americans program at Queens Public Library, uh, so that the student can get um, free help. We are doing it uh, right now in three different locations. One is Elmers, another one is Flushing, and um, another one is um, Broadway Library. All the libraries, uh, you know, all the sessions, it, it, it is a semester, uh, by semester we do it. So 12 session per semester and uh, all the classes are full. Basically each class we have more than 25 students were coming and they're from different ethnicity, you know, and they are practicing their uh, US citizenship exams for spoken reading and writing. So this is one of our highlighted workshop that New Americans program, um, you know, provide for immigrants. Here is another example, apply for US citizenship for free legal help at the library near you. Um, so once again, uh, Queen's Public Library always partner with um, always partner with community-based organization. So so we basically uh, you know uh, partner with the other organization. As you see in the flyer, we are partner with City Corp, NY Citizenship, uh, Robin Hood Foundation, NILAG. So all these. Uh, organization they're they're doing event helping uh, client or students who needs to you know apply for US citizenship and sometimes we have a clinic at the clinic um, there 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 are lawyers who excuse me who helped uh, who always help students or the applicant fill out the uh, 400 forms and uh, you know what they need to do to apply for US citizenship. So this is one of our very high high um, demand uh, workshop and event. And as you see, we partner with these many different organizations. So it, the workshop is always free of cost. So we don't ha have to pay anything. And then um, next one, we have um, free immigration legal services at the library. Since uh, Queen's Public Library is BIA accredited and Immigrant Justice Corps provide us the lawyer and we provide the free immigration legal services uh, with the uh, space and then, uh, um, you know, uh, the information they need. Uh, we always have resources, so we share with them. And once again, the uh, the attendance is very, very good uh, for these uh, high demand, you know, uh, classes. Uh, next one is immigration assistance. Uh, you know, we have a web page. Uh, basically, if you go to uh, www.queenslibrary.org, you will find all the information that I'm talking about. Everything is online. So we keep, um, uh, on, we keep information updated two months in advance. Uh, for example, right now I'm working on uh, 
um, two months advance scheduling and uh, which is me and June. So all the March and April's workshop and the programs uh, we are organizing for our clients, they are already online. Uh, you can find all this information. And, uh, you know, uh, since we are doing this, uh, services for our immigrant community, uh, they need language assistance. And then um, most of the workshop we have, we are doing in different languages. And the services, all these services we are doing, these are confidential, safe, and one-on-one. -on -one. So, uh, so that like um, uh, the clients uh, feel comfortable when they come for help. Uh, the next one is Know Your Rights Workshop. The reason I wanted to share with you guys are because as you see, the flyer is in English and Chinese. And we also have Chinese or Korean? Chinese, Korean, and Spanish. So um, as I said, we are committed for our uh, you know, clients that will serve their languages. So this is one of the, uh, you know, a flyer that does the way we do uh, publicity and uh, this is an example for our fraud we do publicity in many different ways such as uh, printed flyer website monthly guide social media and ethnic media and near american program has connection with chinese media bengali and spanish media and we do have our own um, uh, social media which is facebook page so whenever we have anything highlights for example uh we are working on women history month and um talking about women history month as you see interfaith breakfast uh so one of the organization named connect uh it's been more than eight years i've been working with them and they are a very proud partner of queen's public library and um, they are community, they are a nonprofit organization, and um, they do, they do uh, twice a year interfaith breakfast. So we partner with them, uh, and we invite organizations or representatives. They come to the uh, you know interfaith breakfast, and then we talk about interfaith. Uh, it is a very well known and then um, a very demandable program at Queen's Public Library. In the picture, uh, we have um, you know we have a, a program and services director, uh, Ms. Sharon Murray. Uh, he had a, she had an opening remarks at Queen Central Library 2019, and this uh, event always attended uh, near like 30 or 35 organizations. So this is one of our highlighted uh, event that we are doing, and I do the coordination, and I, I feel pretty pretty you know good because um, uh, and blessed. Of course, this is one of the needed topic. We need to talk about interfaith and, and then, you know, it's important. Uh, talking about the consulate partnership, um, as I mentioned to you before, uh, that we do most of our workshops, you know, partnership, and the, those are like free of cost. Uh, but um, here you see the Korean Education Center, um, they donated 1300, uh, 13,500 uh, for fiscal year 2018 and 19. So we are able to provide Korean classes and cultural program in Korean uh, in different libraries, as you see, Flushing, McGoldrick, and Sunnyside uh, for one year. And then, uh, you know, the, the partnership was started um, uh, in 2014. This is one of the uh, Korean uh, workshops that, you know, I just wanted to share with you guys the beauty of Korean tea, culture and testing. Uh, as I said, these kind of workshops like, you know, always are heavily impacted. Uh, people come and they learn and share their culture. And when they come, uh, sometimes we monitor uh, as a library staff. Um, I, I can tell you, you feel like you went to Korea and then having their culture, learning their, you know, uh, like how they do this uh, in their culture, it is very important. And uh, it, it's a good uh, promotion for sharing, uh, 
is gender culture at the Queen's Public Library. And uh, we also have a partnership with Chinese consulate. Uh, Chinese con consulate one time donated like more than $100,000 for flashing library. And we have a Chinese collections named Shanghai Window. And we had done um, lots of cities of Chinese calligraphy workshop at British Middle Library, Flushing Libraries. And then, as I said, the programs and then um, event are well attended. And uh, we, we are very proud that we have that uh, connections and uh, we are able to do uh, some of the you know, cultural program at the Queen's Public Library. This is one of the picture uh, from from the event Chinese calligraphy. Uh, let me tell you, uh, the picture taking policy, we do have a policy for nearly everything, but we do have, uh, you know, signed uh, these, these attendees, uh, uh, the photo release form, so we can use them for our media or we can keep it in our, you know, um, uh, our record. So that's important, the saving our, you know, you know work and, uh, as you see, that was very well attended, you know, event. And uh, as I said, uh, Chinese, Korean, and any kind of cultural programs at Queen's Public Library is always very, um, you know, welcoming and people come and attend. So most of the time they come to learn other culture. Sometimes they come um, to share their own culture, you know. All right, so much to share. As you see, Bangladeshi Consulate uh, book donation ceremony, um, but we have a limited time today. How much I can share with you guys. So I'll try my best. Since the Bangladeshi population has grown so fast uh, in Queens, Bangladesh Consul General donated a good amount of Bengali books for Central Library and prepared with many other series of cultural program in collaboration with New Americans program. In the picture, Queen's Public Library's chief librarian, Mr. Niboron, and Bangladesh Consul General in New York City, Honorable Mr. Sami Mahasan, and of course, Coping Skills Librarian, uh, uh, Selina Sharmin, uh, who I, you know, it is me who coordinated the event. And um, it was a very successful event, uh, and then everybody appreciated it. And uh, International Mother Language Day celebration was uh, one of the, another most important celebration from Bangladesh and Bangladeshi people. So we, we collabor co co coordinated and then um, Bangladesh Consulate Office in New York, uh, they, uh, they, they did uh, like um, an event for International Mother Language Day, February 21st, 2016. 19 at Flushing Library. There are seven countries consul generals participated and the cultural program represented different languages and countries such as Bangladesh, China, Kosovo, Bhutan, Colombia, and India, uh, including Mexico. As I said, the attendance was um, overflowed since that capacity for Flushing Library was only 200 people. Um, I want to uh, talk about something about like internal partnership at Queen's Public Library, which is like uh, we have uh, other departments internally, job and business academy, program and services department, other learning centers, community libraries and health and community services, which is like from New Americans program, the, uh, the education workshop, we partner with job and business academy. For example, uh, from May and June, we'll be doing uh, a Bengali computer class at uh, Central Library, which has a huge demand uh, for Bengali speaking population. We also have uh, Spanish speaking um, uh, computer classes, uh, Spanish computer classes in Spanish. So that classes are always full in three different library locations, Central Library, uh, Flushing Library and Langston Hughes Libraries. And as I said, community libraries, we have, uh, since we have 65 community libraries, sometimes library uh, branch manager, they contact with New Americans program and they want 
to do you know cultural program and then sometimes they have their own budget so they they share with us and we um coordinate the whole thing like programming or educational workshop another thing is like you know we do have uh, collections in different languages uh, I think we have more than 60 or 70 languages collection at Queen's Public Library. Uh, specifically, um, we have heavily impact in uh, Flushing Library for Chinese, for example, uh, Jackson Heights for Spanish, and then, you know, side for Bengali, uh, something like this. So internal partner partnership is also important. Uh, because um, you know uh, that's the way we share our work with other you know uh, department. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, computer classes in different languages it has a huge impact for Queen's Public Library, and then um, we have from coping skills we have city budget. And I get to spend the budget uh, before uh, any fiscal year ends, like June thirtieth. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm I'm working on that to finish my budget. And we do have organization who is partner with us. So they gave us the teacher. So we paid them, and then um, uh, there are like uh, two different location. As I said, uh, computer classes is happening right now, including the Bengali computer classes. The attendance are really good. And we do uh, publicity in two different languages, English and Bengali. And we make sure uh, every flyer says that the program is in bilingual or only English or maybe you know English or Bengali or English and Spanish, something like this. Um, uh, as part of my job, uh, sometimes I need to do a community or outreach. Uh, uh, to the neighborhood. Uh, for example, I always go hospitals, schools, colleges, and churches, mosques, local mosques, mosques senior centers. Um, I do have training for book mobile. As you know, Queen's Library has a book mobile services, and uh, we have a uh, outreach pro program at Queen's Public Library, and they have correctional outreach program too. Sometimes I, I help them. Uh, by attending their events. And since I have the language expertise of Bengali, uh, Hindi, and Urdu, and uh, I can help them, our outreach unit. And I just want to mention one outreach specifically last month I had done. There is a high school in Jamaica, Queens, and the population for the student body is growing. Uh, these are Bangladeshi students, and they had a musical night. So the principal contacted with us, and then since I speak Bengali, I get to go there uh, to do our, uh, you know, outreach services. So I mean, I mostly talk about Queen's Public Library services, and then um, the Americans program, citizenship, all this stuff. Uh, but uh, the the thing was, uh, you know, surprised me. Uh, there were a lot of Bangladeshi people who are newcomer. And they bought their teens uh, with them, and they are in the school, so they are having difficulties with learning, you know, speaking English. So I, I, I was blessed enough to give them the information so they can come to Queen's Public Library and learn uh, English classes. Since we have a huge chunk of services for e English as a second languages, we have, um, as I mentioned earlier, we have seven uh, adult learning centers. And every semester, we have 30 locations, uh, including uh, the, uh, I mean, the English as a second language, the English learning classes. So those are uh, very popular for our clients. Uh, last, last, last not least, I just want to focus on coping skills workshops that I coordinate. Uh, last year, 2019, I had coordinated more than 144 workshops. And I tried to meet all the you know, basic languages spoken in Queens, uh, but I saw I coordinated 12 languages such as Arabic, Bengali, Chinese, English, Haitian, Hindi, Korean, Nepali, Russian, Urdu, etc. 
and um, the attendance has, uh, you know, increased. Uh, there were like more than 6,200 6, uh, attendance. So it was a lot and huge, huge impact for our library services. Um, and uh, I just want to uh, talk about a little bit of my experience at Queen's Public Library. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I came from I, I came from Bangladesh uh, in 2000. Uh, in, migrated with my my husband, and uh, I went to St John's University 2004, and I finished and graduated uh, Masters of Library and Information Science from St John's University in uh, 2006. Uh, so after I finished and completed the course coursework. Um, I realized that it was not easy to get a job uh, anywhere, and I, I thought, like, now what? I graduated, so now what? It was a very painful process to find a job. I applied to every public library in New York City. Finally, I was hired as a children's librarian trainee 2007 and Queen's Public Library. The issue I faced were unpredictable because doing customer service was challenging for me. Library patrons wanted to see Americans at the desk, not the Asian girl. They might think I was from India, but most of the time I asked where you are from. And sometimes they did not even know where Bangladesh is. I confirmed that no matter where I come from, what language I speak, I could help you because I'm a librarian and I have an MLS degree from St. John's University. I would have benefited from an internship that offered some real life work experiences. I'm a quick learner, I can tell you. So I adapted quickly and started uh, reading and studied 300, more than 300 children's picture books and memorized all the 300 writers names for children. And Queen Public Library trained me as a children's librarian from the beginning on how to complete the program, how to build their core collections, and early literacy program, of course. In my new country, I became a US citizen 2005. I did not hire any lawyer to complete the process for US citizenship. I did it by myself as an immigrant. I learned and adapted to the new culture. Now I'm helping other immigrants settling down and succeed in the United States. I feel proud for that. I did not know. I'm telling you, I did not know that I was the first Bangladeshi woman librarian at Queen Public Library. In 2007, I started my full-time job. And while I graduated in 2006 from St. John's University, I did the first bilingual story time at uh, Queen's Public Library. So uh, there was a new services was added uh, to the library service. As we know, all know, the demographic had changed in Queen's since the last census and a decade ago. So finally, 2011, I applied for a position um, you know, in immigration services at Queen Public Library New Americans program, and I was hired as a coping skills librarian. Last not least, I think I found my niche and I love my job as a coping skills librarian. Since 2011, I believe public libraries are universal for most immigrants to find a home away from home. Um, with that, I will finish my. Um, um uh presentation uh thank you gracias donobad uh, if you have any question i can answer thank you thank you for having me thank you so very much selena are there questions or comments lots of great information here yes i will be happy to answer any question and i hope you guys enjoyed my presentation That's yes very, very much thank you yeah while people are thinking um, of their questions and comments, just to point out that while Selena is working at the Queen's Public Library in New York, um, you're going to find lots of these same uh, diverse communities and populations uh, in different parts of the country, in different parts of the world. Um, so just to kind of re-emphasize the point that 
you know, the New York Public Library System, the Queens Public Library System, the Brooklyn Public Library System, um, similarly to, uh, you know, say San Francisco Public, Chicago Public, lots of people tend to think that they will only uh, encounter such diverse populations and so many at once in these very large systems and cities, but that may not be the case. So when we talk about doing this work, with diverse populations, uh, we should be ready, willing, and able uh, to to work compassionately and effectively with these populations anywhere that we go. Okay, great. Okay. So the questions are coming in. All right. Yes. So that. All right. So yes, I think maybe have, Dylan's question. Yes. The homeless issues. Uh, public library work on homeless issues. Yes. Org. Org. So we do have uh, those, you know, problems at Queen's Public Libraries, and then we have a different department and the person assigned for homeless, you know, issues. So they work on that, um, you know, uh, like uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I don't have to deal with the homeless issues, but we do have the policies and that we are trained. As I said and mentioned, all the Queen's Public Library staff, we are current in training and then what needs to do, we are very aware of it. And then I can share you one personal experiences when I was working in one of the branches. As I mentioned you earlier, I physically worked uh, out of 65 libraries. I worked in 42 different libraries. So as I said, uh, I'm an Asian girl, so people didn't trust me as a librarian. So it was hard begging. And then one day, one customer, um, uh, one of the branches, South Ocean Park, he came at the lunchtime and he asked for the information. I, pro you know, I, I uh, the information was provided. I was at the reference desk, but the homeless guy, he smell stinky and then I, I can I can smell like you know the you know something like you know wrong and then he didn't believe me he said uh, no you gave me the wrong information and then I said okay you you hold on I, I, I will be right back and then my supervisor manager he was at the lunch room so I explained him what happened so when Mr. Jason Reddy came and he explained to the customer, like, you know, he was homeless, obviously, and he was drunk. So he was handled, my supervisor handled it well, uh, that Selena provided the, you know, right information. So, uh, you know, she was right. And then, you know, we, by working and then customer service, as I said, um, we have lots of training about like how to handle the situations and i mean uh, we are pretty uh, pretty trained on that so we handle all these you know things uh, if you come to anytime central library queens public library in jamaica queens uh, we have cafeteria so people especially homeless they come inside the library and they try to like stay all day because Queen's Library is for everybody, so we cannot block anybody, but we have security. So what happens is, you know, anybody is not behaving well, so we don't have to deal with that at the central library. They pretty much like, you know, handle it. But at the branches, as I mentioned, the supervisors and we are trained enough. So we, if anybody complain, like if anybody is drunk, uh, and then it's stinky, you know, it smells stinky. So we just uh, talk to them nicely, politely. The sir, uh, is there anything I could do about, you know, do how, what kind of help do you need? So we are very, you know, you know, you know well uh, trained for that. And there is another question. Um, I was wondering if the Queen's Library Innovation enforcement action are subject to greater security from organization like ICE. Is there a policy of police? Okay, that's a great question. Uh, not so far of my knowledge. Uh, from my department, New Americans program, we organize some workshop like what we, this is an immigration issue. And as you see throughout my uh, presentation, we help with everything we we organize pretty much uh, any topic workshops so uh regarding the ice issue we we did have a organization who presented like uh the people are undocumented people who are asylees uh, asylum seeker who what they need to do we do help them with information but uh, so far my knowledge there is no um you know 
uh, situation uh, you know happened and queen's library is a safe place for everybody okay you're welcome are, are there other questions or comments Well, um, I don't know if we still have, you know, a few minutes, I can uh, share some other things uh, that sometimes we have issue, like, you know, of course, I mean, I didn't talk about most the issue uh, in my presentation. As I said, there are so many things to share. And by just working at Queen's Public Library, uh, you know, we experience through our work. And then uh, when, whenever we have any issue, uh, we try to resolve it uh, behind the counter or you know behind the decks we have many many you know situations and it depends every situation is unique so we we try to handle you know all the situations yes and then uh, as i mentioned uh like i was the first bangladeshi uh, uh Bangladeshi librarian, women librarian for Queen's Public Library. I did not even know that I made the history. But uh, when I started the bilingual story time, one of the branches in 2007, um, I did not have any collections in Bengali. So I had to discuss with my supervisor and she uh, she gave me, I mean, there was a given money for a blanket budget for $1,000 and then, um, I, I I was able to buy some books and then uh, conducted the bilingual story time in Bengali and I invited the councilwoman Michelle Otardos and she came and read the story to the audience for the children and she donated $500 you know of money for the book you know for the library so it was a you know huge impact uh, for the library services um, there is another question Okay, that's a great question. Um, as I said, I've been working at New Americans program since uh, nine years and with the library for last 20 years. Uh, we we have, um, we are partnered with Queensboro president, Melinda Kersh's office. Uh, so we have a monthly tax force meeting every month. So group of people, organization, more than 60 or 70 people, we meet there and we discuss and we have training about the current issues and we, do, we exchange our business card. And as you see, we are partnered with Mayor Office and many other organization. Most of the time, they contacted with us. The school contact with us. The charges contact with us. The colleges are contacted with us. And depending on the current issue, for example, Census 2020, we are partner with Census um, Bureau. So uh, we will be doing a partnership in partnership or you know, many programs to do workshop. Uh, but mostly uh, we are trained for current issues. Uh, another issue will be, um, you, can, you can name it, I mean, you know, immigration law and changes. So we sometimes we contact, for example, if we need a Bengali speaking lawyer, so, uh, you know, then um, as a Bengali speaking, I, you know, person, I, 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 I go to the uh, my connections and then find a, you know, proper person who can speak in, um, in Bengali. But as I said, the uh, most of the time, you know, uh, we, we are pretty, you know, good that um, Queensboro President's um, monthly task force. I'm a member of uh, that task force, and we meet each month, and then we we have um, organizations coming, and we, we create, you know, new contacts. Need Queen's Public Library. Okay. Did I answer your question? Another, another. Thank you. Another examples like I, uh, I have to do two more outreach to the local uh, elementary schools uh, since their population also changing. Uh, so I'll be going going to the public schools and talking about library, you know, services, Queen's Public Library services. Yes. Okay. 
other questions or comments? I can tell you, like, you know, uh, during my time of uh, time, of, like working at the Queensborough Public Library, I think I have grown a lot because Queen's Library always trained us. And um, yes, uh, you know, serving the population is not easy. Uh, we have to have a good customer, you know, service. And um, many times, as I said, people they expect you know Americans behind the desk. Americans mean like anybody except like I since I'm an Asian girl and I had a pretty tough time uh, to learn you know and I, I think I mentioned one time that I had to learn 300 children's uh, you know uh, books, picture books, writers' name. Uh, so it was tough uh, serving uh, the community. Uh, it was not easy. It was a big challenge. Yes. But I think, like, as I said, I have overcome it. And um, um, yes, and I'm blessed that, you know, I found my niche and I'd love to work many, many more years. Thank you so much for listening to me. Is there any, any question I can answer or any comment? I'll be happy to do that. Dr. Cook, do you have any question for me? I don't. This was amazing. Thank you so much. Not a problem. My pleasure. So, All right, everyone, please join me in thanking Selena for taking some time out. It was wonderful to hear about your experience and all of the wonderful work that you do. And we are grateful to have your expertise. Okay, you are very, very welcome and love to you know, talk more in future. Yes, please. Absolutely. Okay. All right, everyone, thank you for another wonderful session. Uh, for the folks in class, thanks so much for coming. And for those that watch the recording, I hope you will enjoy the session as much as we did. Uh, and thank you to the guests that are joining us for the lecture in the Diversity Lecture Series. All right, I wish everyone a good night and we will meet again next, or excuse me, not next week, uh, two weeks from today, and we will resume our uh, diversity lecture series. Have a good evening, everyone. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.